In this video I will show you how a for loop works. Ok, consider the following scenario. I want an LED to blink 5 times very fast and then wait for 3 seconds. I will use pin 2 and how this would look like is I digital write pin 2 hi then I wait for let's say 100 milliseconds then I then I turn pin 2 low again turning off the LED and then I wait 100 milliseconds again so this would be one blink but I want it to blink five times so I do this five times one two three four five and then wait for three seconds yeah of course I need to tell him that pin 2 is an output so let's see how this looks like I will take an LED and the flat side is the cathode which needs to be connected to ground. So we connect the flat side of the LED to the ground pin of Arduino and then we use a resistor to connect the other pin of the LED which is the anode to pin 2 of our Arduino. In order to calculate the resistor we can use Ohm's law. So the resistance is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the current that is flowing through the resistor. When the pin is turned on, we will have a voltage of 5 volts and the LED has a voltage of around 2 volts. If you want to know the exact voltage of the LED, you should look into the datasheet of your specific LED, but usually it is around 2 volts. The voltage across the resistor is now the difference between 5 volt and 2 volt, which is 3 volt. The last thing we need to know is the current. And a standard signal LED requires 20 milliamps. And again, if you want to know it exactly, please look into the datasheet of your specific LED. Now we can take these numbers and calculate the resistor. So it is 3 divided by 0 0.02 resulting in 150 ohms. I will connect the flat side to ground and the other side using 150 ohm will be connected to my pin 2. And we see the fast blinking pattern. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then nothing. Whenever you see repetitive code, you should think about how to improve it. And in this case, it can be improved by using a for loop. Inside of the round brackets, we have three things. Initialization, condition and update. So the initialization will be declaring and defining a variable. I will use i equals zero. So let me quickly introduce the byte variable. It uses one byte. It stores a number between 0 and 255. In this case, I will use it for storing the number 0. <laughs> we could also use an integer variable. An integer variable is stored inside of two bytes. We don't need that big of a number, so it's just a waste of memory that we will not use anyways in this case. But um, it's always nice to write as efficiently as possible. So we start with zero. Our condition is i is smaller than five because we want to blink five times and zero already counts. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, and then five doesn't meet our condition. So we jump out of the for loop. And then we have update. And what needs to happen? every time we do the loop, i needs to increment. So we jump from zero to one, from one to two, and so on. So what we want is i equals i plus one. 
So i is 0 plus 1, which means 1. i is 1 plus 1, which means 2. i is 2 plus 1, which means 3. Now in programming this is used very often and that's why there is a shorter version plus equals 1. And if you only want to add 1, there is even a shorter version, which is I++. Everything of this means the same. And then we have our curly braces. And we will stay inside of these curly braces as long as this condition is met. And what will we do inside of our for loop? We will do exactly this. We will turn on the LED. We will wait for 100 milliseconds. We will turn off the LED and we will wait again. And we can delete all of this. So this is how you would optimize your code so that it is not as repetitive as before. And every time you need something to go up or down, you use a for loop. So let's try this code. And it looks exactly as it should. Here comes your exercise. Change the speed of the blinking so that the delay between the blinks goes from 500 to 400 to 300 to 200 to 100. In horrible code it would look like this. Um, 500, 400, 300, 200 and then 100. Pause the video and solve this using a for loop. So we need a for loop. I will start with the i equals 500. Attention, this is not allowed because the byte variable can store numbers up to 255. So we need an integer variable in this case. We start with 500 and as long as i is bigger than zero, we subtract 100 from i. And inside of our curly braces, we wait for i milliseconds. So this starts at 500, then goes down to 400, 300, 200, 100, and then it jumps out of the for loop and it waits 3000 milliseconds. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of Arduino. Thank you for watching, see you next time.